Hey everybody, this is Kai Altera here with Kai Talks About, and in this video I'll be showing you guys how to display the readings from a DHT22 on an i to c LCD screen. So here are all the hardware components you're going to need for this project. You're going to need four male to female jumper wires and five male to male jumper wires. You're going to need your microcontroller and breadboard, your i to c LCD, your 10 kilo ohm resistor, as well as your DHT22. Before we go into connecting the necessary hardware, let's first talk about your i to c LCD, which is pictured up top, and your normal LCD, which is at the bottom. Now, your i to c LCD is way better, vastly better than your normal LCD, and that you only need four pins in order to get everything up and working. That is your VCC, which is five volts, your ground pin, as well as your analog pins, which will connect to analog four and analog five of your microcontroller. Now, compare that to your normal LCD, which needs every single one of those pins connected to a pin on your microcontroller. Now, not only does it severely limit the amount of pins you can use for your connections, but it also heightens the likelihood that you will make a mistake and also increases the wasted time um, because you have to figure everything out. You have to look at the diagram and you have to make sure you connect everything exactly how you have to. And if you mess up, well, that's another five or 10 minutes gone trying to figure it out or more if you're not very experienced with connecting things for your microcontroller. So that is why we do not use our normal LCD, but instead we opt to use our I to C LCD. It's vastly better. There are only four connections you need to make and it's just simpler. And that's what we like. We like to keep things short, simple, and to the point. So let's continue on with this project. So now let's go ahead and connect all the hardware. The first thing you want to do is to go ahead and get your DHT22 and you want to look closely at it. If you look at it as I am right now, you can go from left to right and you see a plus in the middle, you see an out and on your right, you'll see a negative. So that is what tells you what your positive, your negative is and what your data pin is. So let's go ahead and get that connected. So now that's in the breadboard, you want to get your 10 kilo ohm resistor and you want to put one leg in the positive and the other leg in the out section. So it is now a pull up resistor. So you want to get your one of your wires, preferably your bread wire, and you want to connect one leg to the positive and the other leg to the positive rail of your microcontroller. You want to get your uh, brown or black or green and you want to connect that to the negative rail of your breadboard and you want to get your yellow or white um, wire you want to connect that to your out and your other leg to your d2 which is your digital pin 2. now in all honesty it doesn't matter what the color is for your um, for your connections but to make it a little easier um, for your eyes when you're looking at, especially if you're new to this. Um, that's why I say your red is normally going to be your power, your black, your brown, or your green is going to be your negative, and your white or your yellow is going to be your signal wire. Now, there are going to be some cases where you can't use those specific colors all the time, but for this example, we're going to try and stay as close to it as possible. Now, one thing about your DHT22 connection is that it doesn't have to be your digital pin too. It can be any digital pin on your microcontroller, but for simplicity's sake, we're going to go ahead and just connect it to your, um, your D2 digital 2 pin, okay? Now, the next thing you want to do is get your green wire, and you want to connect that so that one is on your ground of your microcontroller and another is on the ground rail of your breadboard. Now here's a purple wire we don't normally use, but this is all I have uh, for right now. And you want to connect one leg to your five volts and then the other to the positive rail of your breadboard. Lastly, we're almost done. Uh, you want to go ahead and get your male and female wires. And you want to turn it over and you want to look for a VCC. Okay, so when you see your VCC, you want to put your red wire in there, and then you want to connect the other one to the positive rail of your breadboard. You want to go ahead and get your brown, and that'll be your ground. So connect one to the ground, and the other to your breadboard's ground. Okay, next step, here are the different colors. Um, your SDA, 
you want to connect to the SD here. And then for your microcontroller, you want to connect SDA to analog pin 4. So once we find that analog pin 4, go ahead and put that connection in. And then for your SCL, connect that to SCL here. And then you want to connect that to analog pin 5. Oh, so I made a mistake here in this. Here we go. This is analog pin 4 here. And analog pin 5 is what your SCL goes into. So once you make that connection, boop, you are done. So this is all you need for your hardware connection. So now what we're going to do is go into our computer and we're going to go ahead and work with some code as well as um, text uh, formatting for your LCD as well as explain the code needed for your DHT22. Trust me, it's going to be really simple and really quick. So let's go ahead into it. So here is your DHT LCD sketch. What I'm going to be doing is pointing out the important parts of the code that shows you guys exactly how the DHT22 works in conjunction with the I2C LCD. So I'm just going to point out the important parts. Okay. The first thing we want to pay attention to is to find DHT pin 2. The 2 is the uh, digital pin that we're connected to via hardware. So if we changed it from 2 to 12, we would change this to 12 in the code and then we make sure we change the hardware connection from digital pin 2 to 12. Uh, you, again, you can change it to any digital pin you want to as long as you make sure the code number matches the physical digital pin number. The next thing is your liquid crystal I to C LCD. The 0x27 is the actual address for the LCD and your 16, the number 16 is the amount of uh, columns that you have and your columns are your up and down okay and your rows are your left and right so you have 16 characters that you can have keep that in mind for the next couple portions of this uh, video okay um, here I have commented out serial begin you can just delete this uh, the reason why I had it is because at first I was working on the serial monitor but now everything is via LCD and you want to make sure you have your DHT and your LCD begin as well as your backlight. This is an optional text to have. Um, again, make sure you have at least, well, no more than 16 characters per line. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So if it's 16, uh, if it's actually above 16, uh, it will be partially cut off. So we're good on here. Just make sure that you count the number um, as you go. Then we're going to have our delay for two seconds so that this will stay on the LCD for two seconds. And then you have your LCD.clear. Your LCD.clear automatically uh, clears your screen and it takes you to your position of double zero, double odd. So it'll be column zero, row zero. Okay, because it starts with zero and then one. Okay. Next. Your H, float H, that is your DHT dot read humidity. You could change this from a float, uh, which will give you like 87.23 to just an int, and your int will be an integer, so it'll only say if it's 47%, 57%. But for this case, we'll just keep everything as it is for this D, uh, DHT uh, 22 reading. So H is your DHT dot read humidity, and then here you have your float, which is your DHT read temperature for Celsius. Now, because we are, this is America, we are in America, uh, we use Fahrenheit and not Celsius. So this is what we're going to have as read temperature as Fahrenheit. And Fahrenheit, as we, as you see here, it equals true, which is reflected here in this comment. So every time it reads the temperature, it's going to read it in Fahrenheit. The next thing is to see if you don't get a signal. Now, if you don't have a signal, because you disconnected your signal wire or there was some kind of problem where the Eligu microcontroller uh, or whatever micro microcontroller you're using can't detect it, uh, can't detect the signal, it'll print this, um, which is your LCD print fail to read from DHT sensor. And this actually is over 16. 15, 16 is oh, way over 16. Okay, so we're gonna change this because This should be enough. 13, 14, 15, 16. There we go. So that's the exact number we need. And what this return means is that um, as long as you don't have a signal, it'll keep replaying this. So you'll always see DHT sensor failed, DHT sensor failed. 
Okay. Now we let's imagine we do have a signal, which of course we should, since we already tested the D222 and I already know it works. So next you want to have your uh, heat index. Um, you have your float HIF, which is your heat index in Fahrenheit, and your float HIC is float heat index in Celsius. Now we're going to have this as false because we are in America and we do Fahrenheit. However, if you're in non-America, you would change it so that it's in Celsius if you so chose, which is, you know, up to you. All right, next you're going to have your humidity, and this is the text, and then you're going to print H, H being read the humidity, and it's going to give you a percentage. So you want to make sure you print this, which is your percentage sign. Then you want to set your LCD cursor to um, column zero, row one, which will be the bottom. So this is going to post on the top portion and on the bottom portion you're going to have your temperature reading here I have it commented out which is this will give you your Celsius which we don't need that's why you see here T equals um, DHT dot read temperature which is in Celsius we don't do Celsius we do Fahrenheit so we're going to print F which is read temperature in Fahrenheit okay you're going to wait for three seconds so that we can see it and then we're going to do LCD clear, which takes you to um, column zero, row zero. Then you're going to print your heat index. And then you're going to have your heat index in Fahrenheit. And then print the F, which tells us Fahrenheit. And then you're going to delay it for three seconds so we can see it. And then you're going to go to clear, which will automatically take you to where? Row zero, column zero. And then it's going to keep repeating it. Okay? So um, it's going to all automatically update itself. And the same characters, the same text, um, are going to post. So you're still, you're going to always see your humidity, your temperature, and your heat index characters. However, the value is always going to change depending on the detected value. And that is everything you need. So what you want to do now is get everything connected. So we're going to plug our Eligu in. And we're going to go to tools. We're going to make sure it, the board is nano. The processor is, in this case, an Atmega328 Papa. The port is port 7. And the programmer is Avrisp MK2. So now we're going to go ahead and upload it. Hopefully, we don't get an error throw. This is uploading. And looks like we're done. All right. So. We are done with the upload, so let's go ahead and see what happened. So as you guys can see, you have everything uh, connected correctly, and it's pretty quick, pretty simple, quick, and to the point, and that's how we like it. So as you can see, the heat index, the temperature, and the humidity, those texts will always stay the same, but everything else, the values of those, um, of those topics uh, will change depending on you know what your temperature humidity and your heat index is uh, so without further ado thanks for watching this video Kai Altair here with Kai Talks About please like share with your friends share with different Facebook groups on social media and please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified of any other updates that I do for this YouTube channel also note that I have um, social media I have an Instagram account which goes by the same name Kai Talks About and that's where you'll see um, all my daily updates. So the latest thing that I posted was actually about a water filter that I'm also going to be using for my major uh, revamp project. But um, there, if you follow me, you'll see mo all of my daily updates. On my YouTube, you'll see one or two posts a week depending on how much of a role I'm, um, I'm on and depending on what's going on with my uh, project completion rate. So I'll see you guys later. Have a good day and have a very blessed week and very blessed weekend.